Hi, this is Jason Thomas of the Distance Learning Department here at South Piedmont. And you are a lucky listener to the inaugural podcast of the Cool Tool of the Week. Each week I'm going to try and bring to you something that can make your life a little easier. It'll be some sort of free and online tool you can use to either help with collaboration, workflow, nice projects for your students, or anything else to help with education, get those learners engaged, and help them to do what they need to do. So today, we're going to start with one really cool tool for all of those of you out there that want to make websites but really don't have the online coding and all that background technical knowledge. You can make a really quick awesome looking website in a few minutes and if so inclined you could use this for your students. Have them design their own website. It'll be a nice breath of fresh air for them from the typical design a PowerPoint and submit it. It'll give them something new to do and it's really easy to use. You won't have to pre-teach them pretty much anything. The website is drag and drop. Um, I've run it with high schoolers in you know, between 9th and 12th grade and they were able to pick it up within five minutes without any sort of pre-instruction from me. So I guess without further ado we'll get started. Alright so first I'm going to show you one of the websites that actually was created by a student in a high school that I where I taught. So we're going to go to the website she gave me. This is just the URL that she created from her website. And I click enter and it begins to load her web page. And this is a student who had never done web design before, never made a website in her life. And their assignment was on evolution, pretty much a capstone project to show their comprehension of all the topics within evolution, natural selection, the famous scientists such as Lamarck and Darwin as well as the origin of life and how humans have evolved over the years. And what she did was, she made this site from a template. She included the scrolling images you see in the bottom left. She put all this text in herself, chose the backgrounds, the fonts, uh, and she even included links. Did humans come from monkeys? How do animals adapt? Is there actually a missing link? And how old is the universe? And if you click on these links, she made it so the site automatically goes there. And the site about Did We Come From Monkeys takes her, you to the page about human evolution. And then you can go across the top and browse her entire site. As an instructor, I really like this. It made my job easy to grade. I went through each topic she gave me, graded on whether I thought she comprehended it. I looked at her written communication. I looked at her technological literacy, her tech skills she utilized, seeing is it readable. Did she include images? Does she understand the media she's using? And by doing something in this Wix site, you're addressing a lot of these outcomes that are part of our college's um, new learning outcomes that you are supposed to assess in all courses, such as written communication, oral communication. And in spite of just giving me more information and going about the learning outcomes, you also are forcing these students to utilize higher order thinking skills and you are getting them to use their multiple intelligences so you get these students who are a little bit more artistic or a little bit more visual to be able to use those skills rather than just giving them a multiple choice test. And this can help you as an instructor to better gauge where your students stand in terms of the content mastery as well as give them creative outlets for their um, their knowledge and their comprehension because students get bored with doing the same thing over and over again and as an instructor I get bored grading the same thing over and over again and the one thing about this project was I was interested the whole time grading it yes they got the content and I could use a rubric to grade it but everyone was a little bit different and I could learn about these students just by looking at what they've done so, say you wanted to utilize this in your classroom as a student product, I've gone through a lot of the benefits. Also, if you want to utilize this as an instructor to give content to students, you could design your own website in much the same way. And you could give the students a link to your website that would give them a different way of seeing the information rather than you giving them a PDF file with text on it. And by them being interested, they're more than likely to comprehend the information and understand it, thereby 
minimizing the need for you to remediate and go over things multiple times. Also, this website is persistent, so students can access it from anywhere they have internet, which makes it so they are a little more responsible for their own knowledge. And it's not like a lecture where it's said once and then it's gone, and they have to come to you over and over to ask questions. So this can make things a little easier and a little bit more exciting on both ends, and it can help you to assess the learning outcomes of our college, as well as the outcomes of just best practices in general. So, next we're going to move on to the steps if you do want to create something like this or have your students create something like this in class, how would you go about doing this? So after the break, that's what you'll see. I'm going to go there first, http colon slash slash www.wix.com. I access the site and it says it's a free website builder. What this site does is it lets you make a flash website and you've probably seen these before, if you go to a site and it's all animated and there's things flying everywhere and lots of effects that almost looks like an animated picture as their website. You could create these on your own in Adobe Flash, but it requires a lot of coding and technical knowledge. What this website does is it allows you to use a simple drag and drop interface so that you can make a Flash website as simply as you can make something in Word. So what I'm going to do is sign up, which I've already done. So you're going to click this button right here, and then you will say, not a member, click here to sign up. It'll ask you to create a username, password, and give your email. I've already done this. So I'm going to type in my email address that I used, and my password, and click log in. Once I log in, it takes me to their main interface, which allows me to create a page, explore pages I've already created or edit my account. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a page. So I click create. When you click create, it takes you to a screen where you can choose your page template. A template is just a pre-made design that you can edit to your liking. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a site. I'm just going to choose the music category for right now. I'm just kind of give you an idea and you can check these to find one that fits best for you. Yes, they have categories, but you might find something in showbiz that you want to do for music. So it doesn't really um, exclusively keep you in that category. You can put whatever content you want. So I'm just going to click on this template right here. And when you want to use a template, you just click on edit. If I just wanted to look at it larger to see if I want to use it, I click view. As you can see, it's free. I'll click edit. And it'll bring up a new window and it'll load the online tools. The reason it takes a couple seconds to load is that it's pulling all the online tools in the background in the web page. This is what helps you to build the website. First time you'll get a message from them that asks you some questions, maybe tells you what you want to do. I'm just going to click OK. And here's my website. Pretty simple right now. So here's how you edit the web page. First I'm going to change the background. There's two parts to the background. There's the site, which is around the outside border, and there's the master page, which is the center where your content is. I'm going to change the site background. And all I'm going to do for right now is just give it a different color. Let's say green. I like green. And you can see automatically it changes that outside color. Click OK, and that's it. That's all I want to do right now. So I'm going to close that. I forgot to apply it. So I'm going to click on it, click green, click OK, click OK, boom, green background. If I want to change the master page background, I can give it any one of these textures. I can give it a gradient. I can give it another type of texture. I'm going to go, you can have animated backgrounds where they're actually moving. The matrix, matrix is cool. So I'm going to check the matrix. And when you pull up your website that'll work. But for right now, just for ease of reading this site, I'm going to go with the light gray and close. Now, I've got my name up here. And you'll see it's actually two separate pieces of text. So I'm going to drag this one out of the way. And what they did was they just overlapped these two to give you that effect of a um, shadow. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to click on it, click edit, 
and just type in what I want it to be. I'm going to put Jason Thomas. Then I'm going to click on this one. Click Edit. Type in Jason Thomas. Move it right back up. And there we go. I've got my shadow effect. And there'll be different things on every website. If you want to change a box of text, you click on it, you click Edit. If you want to change an image from the template, you click on the image, click Change Photo. It brings up a little box where I can upload a picture from my computer, I can upload a picture from another website, or I can go to Wix and use their clip art. I'm going to click on co Coffee because I like coffee. So now I've changed it to Coffee. If I wanted this picture to actually link somewhere, I could just click on it and click Link and link it to Starbucks. And it'll open a new window, click OK. Now it's a linked photo. And now the thing about Flash websites, where it's more than just a static website, is a lot of people like to add animations and effects and things like that. There's too many for me to go through with you right now, so I'm just going to click on one, click Glow. Just give you an idea. You can see this glow effect coming out of it. It's very hard on the gray background, but if I change the color to like a yellow, boom, there you see it. And that's kind of cool. You can make these neat little things, especially if students are working on this as a project, they really enjoy being able to see something like this. Now there's tons of other features in this. You can upload files, you can link things, you can add special animations to your pages where the pages fly in or fly out. So if you'd like some more tutoring on this, I can help you with it. But for right now, let's say I want to finish my page. So I'm going to save it, and this saves it to my Wix account. And I'm going to name it Coffee. And what it does is it gives you a website address where you put www.wix.com, then your username, and then the name of your page. And I click OK. And now this website won't be visible until I click the Publish button. Publish puts it out there on the web so people can access it. So I'm going to click Publish. It'll say there's my web address, that's what I want, so I click Publish. This might take a second depending on how much you have in your page. Alright, good, I'm done. So I'm going to click OK. Actually, first I'm going to click on Go so you can actually see my site. So I click Go. And if you are making this for your students, this is the URL you would give them. If a student was making this, they could up put this URL into a text assignment in Moodle as their response, and you'd be able to access their site. And here you can see my Flash site I made. You click on the picture, it brings up a pop-up of the Starbucks site. So you can do a lot of stuff, and I didn't require any kind of coding at all. I just went through and dropped things, clicked on them to edit, and that's it. So like I said, Wix, it's a great tool. If you'd like a little more tutoring on this or just some one-on-one -on -one time or you want to talk about anything, feel free to get a hold of me at my email, which is jthomas at spcc.edu, my Skype name, which is epicthomas, E-P-I-C-T-H-O-M-A-S, or you can call me at my extension 5860. Uh, if you would like to see this podcast in other postings and news and future podcasts, I have a blog where I'll put all these. It's manywelps.wordpress.com. So that website is many, M A N Y, whelps, W H E L P S, dot wordpress.com. You access this site. It's very simple. Right now, the podcast will be uploaded later on today. But it's just my little technology side of the world. Thank you, and hopefully, I can talk to you all soon.